Hello, I guess we're there. <laughs> My Twitch wasn't loading. Um, hey, Doreen, Happy New Year. All right, the bot got activated in the Discord. Okay, we're we're here. Everything's fine. <laughs> Oh, hey there. Oh, thank you. I hope you as well, Chitarin. Uh, it was good. It was lazy and full of delicious food. And yeah, I did nothing productive. Not a single thing. <laughs> okay. Oh, no, I, I again did the thing where I didn't read the thing. I'm sorry, so sorry, but I always forget. I'm really sorry. I just want to get in there. I know, I know, I know. I realized, I realized myself. It's okay. It's okay, we'll go back. We'll read it. <laughs> Forgive me. <laughs> hey, Dizzle. <laughs> Happy New Year. Okay. Allow me to escape this, please. I can't. I can't. And oh wait, it's the it's right. It's the right click, of course. Title. There we are. Yes. Memory is coming back. <laughs> hey, Patch. <laughs> so sorry. So sorry. At least, uh, yeah, people are getting the chance to come in from the notification. Okay. Right, right. Episode 6. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> um, it is at last time for the curtain to rise on Battler Sama's game. Let's observe the fight from the opposite side of the chessboard. Can Battler Sama succeed in playing the demanding role of the game master? There is no longer any difficulty level. At this point, these are not hints, but the confession. Ooh, uh, enticing. Okay. There you go. I'm sorry, Bear, forgive me. I always do that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> there we go. Oh, great. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> I uh, guess we'll see. A beautiful glow shone in from the skylight over the Grand Cathedral. The place was somehow different from the way it had been during the witch's trial. The decorations had changed. The several pleasantly sparkling white ribbons were paper thin, but they hung beautifully in the air. Flowers were arranged all over in a way that would make any place look cheerful. It was like how a single drop of impure water could spoil an entire cask of wine. Okay. Favorite episode of Chinderin's, okay. Oh no. <laughs> no pressure, that's all. Likely. It will likely be the second. I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, okay. Just the presence of the flowers, the ribbons, and the red carpet that ran down the center of the room made it hard to believe that this was the same place Ushiromi and Natsuhi had been falsely accused of a crime. It had truly become a wedding chapel. Okay. These words, spoken by two demons who seemed to be in charge of this gathering, were part of a ceremony for making an oath of love before the eyes of God. Of course, in this wedding celebrated by demons, there was no priest inside. Instead, there stood the witch who controls miracles. Is this a wedding between Burn and Lambda? <laughs> What's happening? So, 
Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> of all things, I wouldn't have imagined a wedding in Mineko, but okay. The bride standing on the carpeted path was Furudo Erika. Okay. The groom's face couldn't be seen. The bride's outfit was without a doubt a pure white wedding dress. Oh, oh you can share that now. That you're in a in a stream streak? <laughs> Interesting. First time I see that. Uh happy for her, okay. <laughs> I just it feels out of left field, but sure. Uh, oh, hey, we have a battler in chat. Oh, yeah, welcome, welcome. Yeah, let, let's see, I guess. Ah. The bride's veil represented both the white of God's blessings and the white of the demon's cruelty. A great many goat nobles, witches and demons were gathered for this wedding. If only their heads hadn't been those of goats, it would probably have seemed to be a very refined crowd worthy of this great cathedral. さすが呼べる。いちいち考えることがエグいったらあれしない。やめる夫に支える妻。素敵じゃない。お似合いよ、エリカ。そしてあなたにもおめでとう。新郎。At that point, Brancastle stared straight into the groom's eyes. The groom didn't answer. His eyes were grey. Oh, this is so creepy. His lips would mutter something from time to time, but no one could tell if the words meant anything. She spoke to the groom in the plural. Of course, there was only one groom, and of course, the grey eyed groom didn't answer. <laughs> I, I object. I do not want this. <laughs> No, please. <laughs> I don't like any of this. <laughs> the Witch of Miracles sneered with an evil smile that would make even demons want to avert their gaze. Even that sneer provoked no response from Bethler's denials. ヒトは愛のために生きるのです。すなわち、今日あなた方は生まれてきた意味を目的を成し遂げた。はあ、生きる力、愛の力の、なんと、という日の輝きがどうかお二人を。It took Battler five minutes to fuck up. I don't know. Hey, you're a needle. He hasn't done anything so far. <laughs> he seems like he's not in control at all. <laughs> so I, I have no idea. On Battler's hand was a ring bearing the seal of the one-winged eagle, proof that he was the territory lord of this world. And on Erika's finger was a diamond ring that could not be shattered by any miracle. Diamonds signify an eternal bond. However, in Greek the word for diamond simply means unbreakable. 
Erika wasn't vowing to love Battler forever. She just wanted to take Battler as her property for all eternity. Right. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> she's property for all eternity. Jeez. Okay. <laughs> this wedding was being performed for the sole purpose of humiliating Battler, of course. あなたを永遠に愛したりなんかしませんだからこの挙式はあなたを征服する儀式ですあなたの心は永遠に脱出不可能の密室に閉じ込められこの私探偵にして真実の魔女フルドエリカに支配されるあんたの持つ領主の座
Your recognition honors me. I um, didn't really engineer my notifications with the <laughs> thought of having so many at once in mind. Your recognition <laughs> honors me. Uh, right. Your recognition honors me. That's cheesy. <laughs> We're gonna bear through that. <laughs> Ah, Mancha deserves it. Your recognition honors me. <laughs> With the sound of the wind in the background. Your recognition perfect. <laughs> honors me. Your recognition honors me. Well, I get it extended then. <laughs> <laughs> Your oh, recognition just... honors me. Yes. <laughs> I thought the voice line was perfect Your for recognition the sub uh, notification at the time. I mean, at least it's not, uh, you know, something that's uh, annoying to hear. Honors me. <laughs> okay, we have a few more. Your recognition honors me. Right, I get the chance to <laughs> collect myself off the floor because what the heck was that opening? Your recognition like, honors not, me. Not the opening, I mean the, the music, but the opening of the episode. <laughs> okay. Your recognition honors me. I think this me. should be the last one. Yes, thank you, thank you so much. That's incredibly generous. <laughs> we appreciate it. <laughs> Uh, now I feel bad for not having more emotes, but uh, yeah, I'll be working. Oh, thank you for the bits, Bench. That's very sweet. Thank you, thank you. Okay, there we go. So, a sound of misfortune strong enough to bring sadness and unease to those who heard it. Slowly, I came back to my senses. I finally regained consciousness on top of a bed with a firm mattress. Where was this again? I couldn't remember where this was. But I could vaguely recall that it was very bad for me to be here. Oh no. Oh no. Yeah, Erika having a really good time usually spells out a very bad time for me. <laughs> At least. Uh, the room was dimly lit. There was a light on, but that just made the darkness and eeriness of the room more apparent. G wedding gifts from Bunch. <laughs> exactly that. Um, there were no curtains over the window, but it was too dark outside to see anything beyond it. If I squinted into that pitch blackness, it felt as though I would see the witch of the forest speaking back at me through the darkness, and I averted my gaze from the window in fear. I couldn't see or hear it, but I got a feeling that if I left this room, it would be bright and warm, and someone would be there for me. I have to get to where everyone else is right now. A bad memory from when I was very young began to well up. Oh. I was having trouble staying awake during a family gathering, and the next thing I knew I was lying on a bed in a room I'd never seen before. I have the horrible, painful memory of waking up there feeling incredibly lonely and crying my eyes out. This room. I'm not supposed to be here. I just want out. Eternal chains. Great. <laughs> uh, once I started to think that way, I didn't want to stay in this room a second longer than I had to. This room scares me. It's creepy. Where is everyone? I want to get out of here right now. I opened the door trying to leave the room. A pleasant glow snuck in through the crack of the door. As I thought, the corridor was filled with a comforting light. I couldn't actually hear them, but I could sense that far away, people were enjoying themselves. Everyone else must be great gathered in the room across from this one. I've been shut up in this lonely, creepy room all alone. I should go quickly. Alright, 
As soon as I thought this, a merciless metallic sound rang out and the door refused to open any further. The chain had been set. I've always hated chain locks. You can open a normal door, lo uh, sorry, a normal lock just by twisting. But chain locks are built in a kind of annoying way where it's difficult to undo them easily. So I've hated them since I was very young. See? Even this chain is causing me trouble and I just can't get it undone. Why is this happening? I just want to leave this creepy room right away. Just on the other side of this thin door, everything is bathed in a warm light. I can't undo it. I just can't undo this chain. The more desperate I grew, the more the unsettling darkness of this room seemed to close in on me from behind, and the more frightened I became. Then I finally noticed. Yes, very spooky. <laughs> there was something wrong with this chain. Yes, there is a chain, but this isn't a chain lock. This is just a chain staked into the door so that it can't open any further. In other words, it's made uh, it isn't made to be opened. Well, what the hell's going on? Who'd do something like this, damn it? I'm so spooked out. No matter what I did, no matter how much I struggled, I couldn't pull out the stake or undo the chain or break the mechanism. This door was just a demon's mouth, made to trick me into thinking it would open before crushing my hopes a moment later. Even so, if only I could just open this door somehow, I could get out of... Uh, I could get out into that pleasant corridor. This desire forced me to keep my hand glued to the doorknob. But it was useless. Both the chain and the stake were firm, and though they clattered about, there was no chance of them letting the door open any further. Even though I could see the pleasant hallway through the crack, I had no chance of opening the door any further. Maybe someone will come if I ill. Maybe the door can be opened easily from the outside. Hmm, sorry. When I thought this, I tried to call out to someone, but it was as though the wind had been knocked out of me. Incredibly eerie and yeah. spooky and creepy and all the words, <laughs> all the related words. <laughs> I could mouth the words, someone, come here, but no voice left my lips. Oh, oh, oh. It's like one of those really, really bad dreams where you can't scream because you're sleeping. Those are the creepiest to me. <laughs> I always wake up very scared from those. Uh, what's going on? Someone, come. Why can't I cry out? Oh no, uh, and sleep paralysis as well. It's so, so terrible. Uh, I've had some really, really weird instances of it. Mm -mm. Help me, help me, help me. Not even being able to say help me out loud scared me more than anything. Getting Higurashi vibes, I guess. <laughs> um, I wouldn't know because I haven't read it. And if I turned around, the witch gazing into the room from the darkness outside might now be inside the room, standing right behind me. I'm frightened, I'm scared, I'm scared. Someone help me, someone help me. I can't get out. I can't get out. Let me out of this room. Oi, ay, 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 you get the idea. お嬢、先方がいらっしゃったそうですぜ。I <笑> like this voice。え?あ。We <笑> go from ear to me giggling like a fool. <笑> okay. <笑> That's Abakusan, right? Oh, there he is! Amakusa ran his finger down my cheek. I awoke in an instant from the doze I had just been in. 
No, I'm so happy to see you guys. <laughs> I glared at Amaksa for waking me up in such a creepy way. But he just played dumb. Oh. Oh. Oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> okay. Where is this? It feels like a parlor in the house of some well-off person. But I have no memory of this place at all. <laughs> Big Mac. Oh god, don't eat. Come on, please, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, definitely not like that, Bunch. <laughs> Where is this? And why am I. Oh, Joe. Huh? Apparently he hadn't expected me to forget something like that just because I wasn't fully awake yet. Oddly enough, I agreed. Why am I in this parlor that I don't recognize? The sound of the footsteps of the person, or people, that Amakusa had mentioned had come right up to the opposite side of the door. I could hear the sound of a conversation. They were probably women. Judging by the coffee and snacks laid in front of me, I was the guest here. In that case, I'd better remember why I came here. Or at least, who it was I came to visit. Who am I? Ushiromiya Enje. Who is the man standing behind me? Amakusa Jusa. Oh, that was the sound. I guess we get entries. The man who used to be my guard long ago. Long ago? Okay. He's now the bodyguard Okonogi assigned to me. Ah, okay. I get it. <laughs> In that case, after Aunt Eva died, I must have thrown off my pursuers and gone on a journey to find out what happened on that day 12 years ago. Is that what happened? Did I have a memory of this? After a knock, the door opened, and the person I must have come here to meet entered along with the maid. Oh, wonderful. Even after seeing her face, I can't remember who she is. That's a relief. The maid introduced her to me first. <laughs> a new character! <laughs> it doesn't surprise me anymore, it's like an everyday thing. And I finally remembered who she was. She. I was sure it was a he. I was about to say, Toya doesn't really sound like a, a female name. She is here. Oh my god, who? え。私が8畳東野 あれは編集部の方に手配していただいた身代わりです。あの読んだつもりでいる。彼らには私の本に何が書いてあっても何も読んでなんかいない。ただ今流行りの作品は欠かさず読んでいるとインテルブル
I was about to say, is this the author kind of calling out certain people? <laughs> I don't know. This person really is eccentric. There's no doubt about it. This is Hachijo Toya herself. I'm not like that, I swear. <laughs> Uh, Hachijo Toya is a mystery novelist who's become the center of discussion lately. Although her actual books are also apparently highly praised, it's her mysterious debut that's attracted so much attention towards her lately. Last year, she somehow managed to win several different awards for exceptional mystery novels offered by multiple large publishing companies, submitting each of her works under a different pen name. And after that, several highly regarded anonymous works were discovered one after another to have been stories she had written in the past under false names, and her popularity soared as she herself became more mysterious than her books. Despite all this, the author herself never appeared in public, and everything about her was wrapped in a veil, a veil of secrecy. <sighs> However, just a few days ago, this author had finally made a public appearance for a book signing, showing up with a mask that covered his face, and drawing even more public attention. And yet, apparently, even that had been a fake. Given this person's radically unconventional track record, it was hardly a surprise to hear her casually insult her fans like this. ろくでもない話ばかりですよ。気分一つで人を雇ったり、首にしたり。何でもお金で解決しようとする無法者のランボー者だとか。違いね。でも私はあなたのような頭のいい人は嫌いではない。だから会ってくれたんですか? The theme is so silly, it is. <laughs> it kind of fits, I guess. え、伊藤育九郎、ゼロ五七六が私八条東也の別のペンネームだと見破ったのはあなただけ。実に見事なるかな。伊藤育九郎ゼロ五七六、おかしなハンドルネームだったわ。でも数字に直すと百十億一千
Hmm. Why does that sound familiar? I could totally play her in a live action. Oh, I guess. <laughs> Around the Japanese parts of the internet, Ito Ikukuro is an extremely famous witch hunter. Ah, aha. I think she's not even trying to hide. Nope. <laughs> it's not subtle at all. <laughs> However, she isn't a big opinion leader like Professor Otsuki. She's one of those message bottle forgers who are always the center of vigorous debate. Message bottle forgers? Okay. They have a bunch of names for these group of people. These groups of people, sorry. Message bottle forgers are, as the name suggests, people who forge and post the contents of riddle-filled message bottles, which purport to tell the story of the Rokenjima incident. Claiming to have discovered a new message bottle, they post either a very similar counterfeit or a new theory with their own interpretation of the truth, claiming that it was written by Ushiromiya Maria. They openly call themselves Ushiromiya Maria, write up a new bizarre tale as if they had been there themselves and knew the truth, and send their stories out into the newest sea that mankind has discovered. The glorious internet. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> ah, calling them the third or fourth message bottles. All of the first forgers were either simple pranksters or crooks trying to swindle collectors. However, eventually, people who claimed to have solved the riddles of the message bottles' tales and reached the truth started to appear. And they started... Uh, they started work creating third and fourth message bottles from Ushiromiya Maria, as though they had moved over to the riddle teller's side. These people rewrote the tale of the witch with whatever interpretation they wanted, and every once in a while certain theories would gather an enormous amount of support on the web. Is this a retelling of what was happening with people when reading the episodes so far? <laughs> this, that's that is. Because of this, some of these creations began to be so widely trusted that they were believed to contain some grain of truth. The more rigid witch hunters openly despised these people, calling them forgers, counterfeit, fade, counter, counterfeiters, counter, uh, or just witches. Ah, I see. The witch hunters versus the witches, I got it. Meta, 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 meta level, yes. <laughs> so much meta. I don't even know at what level I am. <laughs> um, though they claimed to have reached the truth, they refused to tell it and created fake message bottles as though testing everyone else. Is that what the previous episode was? <laughs> Fanfiction? <laughs> it's no surprise that the serious witch hunters were very annoyed by these forgers. However, there were many people who simply liked to entertain themselves with the occult fantasy of Rokenjima, and a small number of those accepted these creations as literary works, glad of this expansion to the mysterious tale. Of all the forgers, Ito Ikukuro was the one uh, most highly regarded. End of the Golden Witch. Yomasete moraimashita. Oh. <laughs> Okay. <笑>人の親族を欲も好き放題に殺せるものです。それが言いたいためだけにわざわざここへ。いいえ、違うでしょう。後ろ宮家の最後の末裔を。<笑> In her latest forgery, and she killed off at least seven of my relatives during the story. Now, if you count Alliance and Banquet, the other forgeries she's made before now, then she's killed off most of my family in horrible ways over and over again. And the others as well. Of course, I'd want to complain. However, all of her works are known for being in both form and level of completion, the closest tales to those written by Ushiromiya Maria herself. I 
I mean, yeah, that that is true. It's true, Red Needle. <laughs> oh, there. Um, it gets very weird very fast when it's about actual people who have endured actual tragedies and loss and death, you know. <sighs> right. However, all of her works are known for being... Okay, I read this. In particular, Ito Ikokuro's first forgery, Banquet of the Golden Witch, was a depiction so complete that it even included Ushirumiya Eva's escape to Kwadorian. People wondered whether this might be the true story of Rokenjima, and it even made it onto the talk shows. So far, all of these tales have been nothing more than electronic text on the web. However, people will eventually realize that Ito Ikukuro is actually Hachijo Toya. When that happens, these tales will become associated with that bizarre Hachijo, and no one will think of them as uh, mere fan creations. People will probably start wondering if this might actually be a third message bottle she found and released under the guise of a story she herself wrote. Uh, when that happens, these stories will probably seem even more bizarre and incredible. ですね。どうして消化。愚かしい。yeah, yeah, I, I get it. The the second, the the whole parading of magic everywhere, yeah. I remember it. Right, interesting. Alright. <laughs> あなたの作品は偽書ではなく真実だから。ええ。真実なのですから、消化など不要。あなたはマリアお姉ちゃんじゃない。ましてや、あの日の六軒島にも存在しない。なのにどうして真実などと向こうがましいことを。王女、頭
人間が何を信じようと真実は変わらないならば今あなたが私の真実を否定するのはつまりはそういうこと Several scholars before Galileo proposed the heliocentric model. However, it was hard to objectively prove it using the scientific techniques available at the time. However, that didn't change the fact that it was the truth. And yet, it moves. So, this is the truth. So, this is the truth. 私がすでに真実に至っていたと遡って人々は気がつくでしょう。Apparently, Enjo just couldn't stand Hachijo's attitude. She kept getting irritated, and every time Amakusa would joke around until she settled down again. Anyway, I like Amakusa so much. <laughs> However, there could be no mistake that Hachijo was a genius and had used her extraordinary intuition to form a most interesting perspective. On the events that had occurred on that island. That was why Enjoy had wanted to contact Ito Ikokuro and hear about her viewpoint. Still, she really was lucky to have been granted this meeting. Enjoy hadn't been absolutely sure that Ito Ikokuro was Hachijo Toya. She hadn't thought that the publishing company would really contact the author. And most of all, she hadn't dreamed that the mysterious masked author would grant her an interview under such short notice. The more she thought about it, the more she realized that the sum of the events leading to this meeting made for nothing short of a miracle. Yes, a miracle. After all, in most cases, I don't get contacted by the publishing company at all and leave for. In most cases, I don't get contacted by the publishing company at all and leave for Nijima the next day. In most cases. I left for Nijima, then I went on to Rokenjima. Then I gave Onechan Saktaro. Huh? Why would I have Saktaro? My memory of the future is all muddled. My head hurts. Hachijo said something about showing Enja something good. Rose from the sofa and headed for the study desk. <sighs> When she turned her back, Amakusa asked Enje, who seemed to be troubled about something, if she was okay. Yeah, this has been quite sketch from her perspective. Although I'm really happy to see her and Amakusa. Huh? いつからここに座ってるのか記憶がないのまだ寝ぼけてんですかいそうじゃなくてだって私は確か大月教授とはアポイントが取れてたけど伊藤育九郎の件では出版社から返事がなくて結局この日は一日何もできなかったんじゃなかったっけはあ天草はあの大きな黒いバッグを That's right. Just before we left for Nijima, Amakusa and I briefly parted ways. He said something about getting a weapon from an acquaintance of his, and he went to go get that large black bag. Wasn't that today? What am I talking about? I mean, I did go to Nijima, meet Captain Kawabata, and inside the bed shop, huh? What? <laughs> Pretty much my thoughts. <laughs> Did my confusion and uncertainty make me sigh out loud? Even though Hachijo's back was to me, she slowly turned around and smiled as though she had peered into my heart. <laughs> Strange memories, ones that even I can't understand. I tried to hide my confusion, but for some reason Hachijo had a strange glint in her eyes, as though she could read my mind. Hachijo 
好きなだけ殺す無限にまるでベアトリーチェねええだから私はやはりネット上で彼らがそう呼ぶように魔女なのかと思ってはい。This was the new one. Hachijo's newest unreleased forgery. Of the Golden Witch. Sbete o shiru a t a s h i a s b e t e ga taikuts. Shikashi nani mo shira no muchi ni sore o yomase. Nani ga shika no han no o eru koto wa kirai dewa nai. Dakara a n a t a ni yonde o shi. そうです、人の子よ。あなたが憤慨しようとも、簡単しようとも、それは私の病を一時忘れさせる。Illness? What? Okay. I'm still, get, I'm still finding it hard to believe, so I'm just being cautious and prudent. And, yeah. もう茶番は終わりにしましょうあんたは誰私の記憶にこんな出会いはないわ Yes, I did try to contact Hachicho Toya However, in the end, I never got a chance to meet her In other words, all of this is falsehood 今度は私は誰の駒悪いけど、この後ろ宮エンジェ飼いならせると思ったら大間違いよ<笑>やはりそなたは面白いかな<笑> She finally couldn't hold it back and burst out laughing Gradually the space around them seemed to fill with a strange purple mist Oh no The room itself seemed to twist and bend Her figure also twisted and after transforming through something that couldn't be described She took the form of just what she had called herself a witch. Mingotonari, Yokuzo Watashio Miabutta. Watashite. Never mind its questions again. Seems so, Enja, seems so. I, I don't know. We like to meme on Battler, but I don't think he is that clueless. Anta that's me, Tok Cho Tekina, Doko Kahito Nameta Kucho. Suguni Majo that the Wakatawa. I'm sad though because I really wanted to see Amakusa more. <laughs> the novelist sitting on the sofa was nowhere to be seen. Even Enja's bodyguard, who was supposed to be around at times like this, was gone. There was only a non human figure relaxing in a large, ornate rocking chair. Yeah, th this was something that threw me off earlier. I'm like, why is she calling her child a man? That's a weird way of talking. But then I was like, what do I know about eccentric writers? Maybe they do talk like that, so I put this away. <laughs> But there we go. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> それでこそ我が退屈にふさわしい Why does Gap have a slit all over the side of her dress? She just does, okay? <laughs> こっちは全然愉快じゃないわどうして私は生きてるの私は名前を明かしたルール違反でひどい殺され方をしたと思ってたけど Well, I did doubt that those people would just let me go so easily. What kind of farce will I be forced to go along with this time? I really don't care. I'll just do whatever I can within the bounds of the role they give me. Whatever I can to help Onichan. Of course, I understand. 
Even if he wins, he'll never come back to me. でもね、あがこよ。私がそなたに求める役割はコマではない。じゃあ、何の用で呼び出したの?まさかあんたの書いたとかいう新しい物語を読めとでも言う気じゃないでしょうね。その通りだ。そなたに望むのはコマではない。
ベルン・カステルもラムダ・デルタも無論ベアトリーチェさえもそなたに対して一切の強制力を持つことは許さない。The switch, who seemed to have an almost divine quality to her, spoke, spoke both quietly and forcefully. There was no threat in her words. However, even so, it was clear that she was on a different level than Burncastle and the other witches, and not at all to be taken lightly. なんぴとであれ許しはしない私の態度が王兵に感じるならば謝ろう人の声私は私はこれでもそなたに最大の敬意を持って語りかけているみたいねその魔女らしい口調さえどうやらあんたの中では数百年ぶりに見せた敬意
Um, at one time, only Beto and her fellow witches had gathered in the smoking room to chat. Now, however, an unusually large number of people were present. Uh, we can check the, uh, the bios if you want. I was just... I don't know, I didn't know if more would pop up or something. Um, let's see. Ah, Amakasa. Man, I love everything about him but his pants. Like, if those pants had just not been ripped, I would be like... 100% on board. <laughs> it's just... I... 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 I don't know. <laughs> There's something about it that kind of puts me off, but otherwise... Um, he, is, he is so, so cool, and his outfit is really cool as well. Has a certain presence about him. Uh, a former guard of Eva's, an extreme thrill seeker who accepts dangerous jobs for a little pay. Uh, he had served as Enja's bodyguard before, but after he broke Eva's strict order not to talk to Enja countless times, Eva ultimately took a dislike to him and let him go. Enja herself didn't find him all that bad because he was someone she could talk to. I don't know if those are they really. They just look like they're made of the same fabric that his shirt is, so. It just seems like it's just an extra layer of stuff. I mean, anyway. It would have been perfect without the rips. <laughs> but that's just me, okay? It's my, it's my taste. I, I don't like ripped pants at all. Uh, on ladies or, or guys. It doesn't matter. We only see Torso. Yes! So, in the novel, when we see him, I'm like. Oh, cool. And I really even like like these uh, uh, asymmetrical details, like over here and this chain here and stuff, like in this here, like it looks super cool, it's super dapper. And then you see the pants and you're like, ah, oh, dang. <laughs> anyway. Enja, <laughs> uh, the final descendant of the Ushiromiya family, 12 years in the future. In the middle of her journey to reach Rokinjima while evading pursuers from the Smadera family, she is sucked into the world of an impossible memory. She reached several truths in the past games and possesses enough power to represent observers. Alright, it is said that many witches are fond of her bad attitude, and many of them even have an eye on becoming her master. So there's more than one? Okay. Uh, Featherine. Oh, okay. Hello. Now that's that's a massive dress. Wow. Okay. The majestic witch of theater going, drama, and spectating. She has tired of life after a thousand years and constantly repeats the cycle of life and death. In the past, she served as the master for numerous games um, as a legendary witch, but her legend, glory, and memory have already disappeared into the past and been forgotten. Only the solemn medal she wears on her chest retains those memories. Ah, okay, so there's the metal part, I guess. Her horseshoe-shaped object floating around her head is a memory aid device. It records her name, appearance, and other aspects of her personality. Okay, she is so old that she would not be able to preserve her own individuality without this. Interesting. Okay. Um, you can scroll down there a bit. You meant here, or... Uh, where I, can, I think I read everything else. Ah, here I meant I, I missed this. So GSDF, foreign legion, private military companies. This man has tra traveled to them all, and his skill in counter sniping and uh, has skill in counter sniping, counter sniping, mm -hmm. and escorting VIPs. Okay. These are the old ones, I suppose. Right, these should be the new ones, yeah? Her human profile. What? Where? Who's her and where do I read the human profile? I mean, yeah, yeah. 
we got that. We got that the first time. If there's one thing that I remembered was that. No, that's okay. I'm just looking, but I think this is just the usual members of the family and Andrew plus the servants, right? And a grayed out Kinzo because we've established that he's gone. Hey, battler. Okay, right. Right. Now, however, an unusually large of number. Uh, sorry, an unusually large number of people were present. <laughs> Ah, oh, okay, sorry. It's a bit overwhelming for me when I see all of the characters to um, figure out which ones are new or um, old. But like, we can read them, otherwise I'll, later I'll forget for sure. <laughs> right, let's let's do battler. Uh, the Endless Sorcerer and Final Game Master. Final? Interesting. Uh, he is the ruler of the game board and the territory lord. To prove that he has won Beto's game, he must take on the position of game master. By succeeding in this, his victory will be acknowledged and Beto's game will reach its end. Because he knows the whole truth, he exists on a higher plane than all others. I see. That's why he has his own type of truth, I suppose. Uh, his golden thing. Uh, Lambda and Burn, you say. Let's see. Uh, because the end of the game has been assured with the victory of the human side, she no longer stands in opposition to anyone. As previous Game Master, she also knows the truth and has taken a position of non-interference. Lambda? Non-interference? Excuse me if I don't believe that, but okay. Now she simply acts as a spectator, enjoying her beloved, beloved Burns' contorted expressions. Uh, okay, and Burn. With the victory of the human side, she should have achieved victory as well. But she seems unable to accept it. It appears that she is less concerned with who actually wins and cares more about how brutal an end might be reached. Ah. Therefore, hostile towards Battler as he tries to end this peacefully, she attempts to use Erika to ruin this final game. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I guess this this doesn't sound new. Right, okay, so I read those, it's fine. <clears throat> but why? <laughs> At the very minimum, it sounds incredibly tiring. <laughs> お任せくださいわがあるじ必ずやアルジに望まれる結果となるよ最善を尽くしますええそうしてね前回のゲームでは犯しな表情ばかり見せちゃったから方が歪んで変なシワにならないか不安だわそそんなことはありませんどんなお
In other words, if Erika could crush this game of battlers, she would in effect wipe away the dishonor of that last game. Hmm, yeah, you're right. At least in the meta world, it, it is uh, kind of like that. Um, though Erika was chomping at the bit to get started, it was taking Battler quite some time to show himself. Then a swarm of gold butterflies swelled out of nothing and formed a human shape. From the shape of that familiar dress, everyone immediately realized who it was. Beatrice gave an elegant curtsy as she appeared. This humble entrance was so vastly different from her usual high pitched laugh that it created a sense of tension as they waited for the start of the sixth game to be announced at last. Otosama? Okay. <laughs> Not only had Beto started talking in an unusually polite manner, she had also used the word father, probably referring to Battler. For an instant, everyone was stunned into silence, but they quickly realized that this was part of something bigger and ignorant. Beto wasn't the type who would keep up this kind of act for long. It would probably fall apart in a few seconds, leaving her laughing and cackling rudely at everyone. Erika, who was itching for a fight, went for Beto almost at once. This is very creepy. <laughs> Not necessarily what she's saying, but just her general attitude. It's just like not her. <laughs> At least not the the her that like she was introduced to us as, right? It's just a full 180 weird piece thing, I don't know. Yeah, right? That the voice heavily contributes to it. It's just, okay, I didn't know this kind of sound could come out of the same person who was doing that other voice before. It is just, okay. Um, voice actors are gods, though. Like, they're amazing. Props to their talent and everything. It's just, uh, it contrasts so heavily. <laughs> okay. <laughs> まあ、By this point, everyone realized that something weird was going on. There was no doubt that the face, the dress, and the hair were all bad teachers. However, her expression was different. Even though she had Beto's face, Beto would never show anyone an expression like that. <laughs> there was a heavy silence. That is the question, right? Who is she? Lambda Delta spoke for everyone there. At first, Beto wore a smiling yet confused expression. However, when she realized that the mood had gone suddenly stiff, her expression finally darkened and she hung her head. Oh man, I love Delano's voice too. <laughs> it's so cute. It's like honey on my ears. Even Delanor was forced to ask despite the rudeness of the question. That was how much this woman who appeared to be Beto 
was not. みなさんの期待されるベアトリーチェとは違うでしょうかあんた何言ってんのまさかとは思いますが記憶喪失とかなんとか言い出すんじゃないでしょうねわ私はまだ生まれたばかりですので記憶は何もありませんですが皆さん
だから魔女たちはその命を奪うことにあまりに無慈悲なわけよね To the witch players, the lives of those characters who appear on the game board are no different from pieces on the chessboard that take other pieces and get taken. After all, these pieces will be set up again when the next game starts. Maria における作太郎がそのコマの最たるものであっただろう。作太郎がお姉ちゃんのコマ Yes, that does make sense. On the game board that represents the inside of Onechan's head, Saktaro certainly does exist and is a piece which always stays by her side. Though he's nothing more than a stuffed animal in the real world, on Onechan's game board he is a full piece, no different from any other piece. セカイでたった一つのぬいぐるみという寄り城が失われたからだだからコマの存在条件が崩れマリアのゲーム版では復活することができなかったそなたがその存在条件を再び満たしてやったからこそサクタロウはゲーム版に蘇ることができたのではない
interesting. Okay. Beato a Cateru Dorimo, Kibomo, Subete Ushinata. Soreo Shiritz to Kizukan Furiushi, Haredakino Game or Tataka Tikitanda. Dakara Mo, Beato a Modorana, Kanojo no Kibo a Tsueta, Kiotorina Oste, Tatabi Tataka Kiryokuno Subeteo, Mo Tsuya Steed, Dakara, Ano Beato Riti a Yominga Rukotoa, Nidoto. That Beato, who just sat around the whole time with empty eyes in the fifth game, must have been her corpse. She had managed to remain on the game board despite it all, but then even that corpse was wiped away. If Beato had been the game master at that time instead of Lambda Delta, the game board itself would have vanished at that moment and everything would have ended. Come to think of it, Beato started to lose the will to fight back near the end of the fourth game. When Beato loses her will to fight, the world of this game disappears. However, the witches wanted to keep playing in this game board world, so Lambda Delta bound Beato in place with the curse of that shackle. She used that shackle to make sure that the game board wouldn't disappear, even if Beato did lose the will to fight. In chess, this would be equ the equivalent of removing the set time limit for each turn, making it endless. However, simply having the game endlessly paused on Beato's turn would cause the witches to die from their illness of boredom. That's why Lambda Delta took the position of Game Master. Starting then, Beato's existence was no longer one of the conditions necessary for the game to exist. That's probably why the shackles binding her to the game board were released. And that explains why she disappeared in the fifth game. お兄ちゃんはレアトに真相にたどり着いたことを教えるには一つゲームが遅かったということね。第五のゲームなどラムダデルタの慈悲だ。バトラの。絶対に真相にたどり着きたいという信念に絶対の魔女が慈悲を示しただけのこと何が慈悲だ。ただの魔女たちの暇つぶしの気まぐれじゃない。話を戻すわ。じゃあ、あのお菓子なベアトはプレ
同じベアトリーチェをもう一度生み出しそれをもって復活と呼ぶこともできよう All of this hits very close to what, at the very least, people were suspecting that Kinzo was trying to do. Like, the parallel is not lost on me at all. It's just. okay. So, I know Okashina Beatua, Sanagara, Beatano Tanago, Ariwa Hina de Tokorone, so Kashak Suruno at Ato de Aro. Am I gonna find the fan art of a, of a chick, <laughs> Beatrice, in the Discord after the stream? Uh. すなわちこのベアとこそがあのベアと得たる雛なのだそれはつまりこの純情可憐な子がやがてはあの雛くれて行かれた魔女に成長するってことね In other words, that Beato is a baby version of the Beato we all know. So just like how no person is born evil, the newborn Beato isn't evil either. Even though she really is a different person. If you measure her by her basis, her soul, they, then maybe you really could call this a resurrection. Oh, I mean... It, it, when she appeared earlier, it took me also back to the conversation that we saw in uh, episode 3, I think it was. It was the one with Eva Teacher, right? So it was 3. Um, where Kinzo was talking to a bad teacher in a world of the past, whatever. Whenever that was, whatever that means, I still can't piece it together properly. Um, but it was highly similar. Like, when Battler interacted with her earlier, it took me back to that. But it was a bit worse as well, because he was so cold, maybe even colder than Kinzo in, in that particular scene, and it's just like, what is happening? Excuse me. Yeah, 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 I figure, I figure. It's just the um, collar is lifted up, yeah. There's a good parallel about Goda wanting to revive his dead wife. <laughs> okay. However, this reality can possibly be easy to accept. Though she may technically be bad of herself, she is also without a doubt a different person. And that way she acts would make anyone feel as though something's out of place. I, 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 don't, I don't know if I said anything smart. <laughs> Sonata no Rodoka, Tanoshi Anta ni Rodoka, Anta wa mo sudeni, subete o stereo ni miru. Sonata to taiwa o stereo kara, sono shiko ni itaru da keda. わが思考はヤオヨロツを束ねて超える人の子にはまるでそう見えるだけに過ぎぬされどそなたがいなければ思考する力さえない通わき病人に過ぎぬ最初からそういえばもっと素直に朗読を引き受けてやったのに私の機
Uh, Featherin rocked back in her rocking chair and looked up at the ceiling. Why does this sound like some sort of Genshin Impact name? <laughs> is, is there something that sounds like that? I don't know why my mind is trying to connect it to something. Well, that's what I... That's what I thought from the very beginning, or an hour ago, or like whenever we got to this point that this was what this was supposed to be. Right? The moment she said, I want you to, to read it, like... Uh, I was like, okay, I see. They're going to kind of... represent us in a way inside the novel. And now that they're also commenting on it, it's... Yeah, so many meta layers to this. It's, okay, <laughs> I need a, I need a little bit of time to adjust and uh, incorporate this as well mm -hmm. into I don't know whatever semblance of framework I have in my head. <sighs> so, she rocked back in her rocking chair and looked up at the ceiling, laughing as though the conversation itself was pleasant for her. Angel was slowly figuring out how to deal with this strange witch. This person was also bored. In other words, Rikishi wasn't as narcissistic as to make it 100% his self-insert. He allowed her to have her own personality. <laughs> Which is cool, it's cool. Um, I mean... This person was also bored, yeah. When a sick person has been in bed for a long time and gets too bored, they sometimes act in a rebellious way. On the other hand, they also get a little bored of being treated kindly all the time. She may want to be respected for her superiority, but it's probably more interesting for her when she's spoken to a little rudely. Huh. Yeah, of course, so then you found the perfect person in it. <laughs> because... <laughs> She's, uh, she, if anything, she's the kind of person who asserts, like, her own space and uh, position and is uh, quite self-assured, so she wouldn't allow someone to completely walk over, all over her. With Angel commenting on things, it also becomes interesting because she's not an impartial observer. Well, are we impartial observers? I don't consider myself one. Because I have certain affinities and likes uh, towards characters, so... Yeah. I mean, there was definitely a reference to that in the beginning. I don't know, her character would probably evolve more and... Um, it would have been also quite paradoxical in terms of... Um, Itukishi not giving her something that is her own and um, building her up to be a lot more than just a shell. Maybe she just started from this concept, but then it evolved in other ways, because uh, if anything, um, the characters in this novel are fully fleshed out with a lot of layers to them, so I, I wouldn't take her to be an exception to that. I hit the nail on the head? Okay. <laughs> I, I, okay, if, if you say so, I'll <laughs> I'm not gonna doubt you. Okay. What a coincidence. That's exactly how I used to be. ]とにかく第4のゲームでベアトとお兄ちゃんに何か確執があったことは間違いないの? このベアトを知ることは真相に至る鍵の一つになり得るわ。そうであろう。私も興味を持った彼女の物語も合わせて読むのだ。はいはい、仰せのままに我があるし。Angel raised her hands like a conductor, and the bookshelves in this bizarre study responded. Once again, several books floated out and began to swirl around NJ. Ok, 
Kinzo's study is the room belonging to the master in the human world. So this study in the world of non-humans belonged to the master of the game board. and was a place where he could look down upon the humans. Therefore, it was understandable that one might mistake the imposing robe-clad man in the center of the study for Kinzo, if only for a second. Wait. That gave me a thought, but okay. It wasn't Kinzo, of course. It was Battler, the one who had taken up the position of Game Master, and who had become the new territory lord of this world. Around Battler was a swirl of glowing fragments, sparkling like the night sky. And on the floor was what appeared to be a red magic circle. To an outsider it would have appeared to be nothing more than an incomprehensible geometric shape. But to Battler, who stood at its center, it was the outline for a new tale. A new line grew across the magic circle following Battler's gaze. Then, at the instant it connected with the complicated symbol, the entire magic circle flashed brightly. This is the as Battler wiped his forehead and finally relaxed, Genji, who was standing behind him and watching over his every move, nodded deeply in response. Genji, エリカ矛盾ベアとのゲームも何度かそれに抵触しそうになったのか。ゲームを生み出す際には常にそれと戦われておりました。特にバトラー様が手強くなられてからは相当の苦労をなさっていたようです。I thought he was incompetent. <笑>今回の俺のこのゲームはベアとに見せても<笑> That face, that smile. <laughs> you can hear it in the voice. So you think it's good enough? <laughs> Is she going to like it? <laughs> Hi. Sorry, I'm not sure if I'm going to like it. Beato, I'm not sure if I'm going to like it. After remaining silent for a while longer, Genji answered. What for bad to think about my fanfic? Mikka Hodo Maini, Omezamini not to Orimus. Batura Samaga died of no game no sekeni shoot you sorry to Orimus Tanode. お知らせを控えておりました。申し訳ございません。そうだったか。あいつめ。だいぶ長いこと寝てたから寝ぼけてやがったに違いない。あいつにぜひ俺のゲームを見てもらいたかったんだ。いや。あいつに俺はゲーム
Butler's face broke into a smile. There was no trace in his expression of the hatred he had once felt towards Beato for murdering his family. ある意味、これが第五のゲーム最後の謎だったわ。そうだ。バトラは真相に至ると同時に、ベアトに対する心象が大きく変わった。それはつまり、やはりお兄ちゃんとベアトには何かの関係があって、それを彼が暴出していた
at this point, infinity of planes that the story is being spread out across, kind of together, kind of like it's multi-layered, but we're seeing all th them squashed together, and we're no longer making the difference be between each individual one. NJ is my self-insert. <laughs> <laughs> I wish <laughs> she's she's too cool to represent me. <laughs> it's a logical thought, even if he has a sin, what would uh, justify something this horrible? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Let's see where they take it. I, I don't want to dwell on it too much because, like, we're in the middle of the conversation. Federine's observation was extremely interesting. In a past game, Beto said clearly that Onichan's, six, uh, Onichan's sin six years before was the cause of this two-day tragedy. Ah, uh, tragedy. There it is. Uh, <laughs> I still don't know what kind of sin that was. However, he figured it out at the end of the fifth game, and he even apologized to Beto. Even though she was the witch who had massacred his entire family in retaliation for his sin of six years before. Yeah, see, this... This statement, as it is a fact, really? The witch massacred the people? I don't know. But okay. Uh, Battler apologized to her. Of course, it was the player Battle, uh, sorry, the player Battler who apologized, not the peace Battler whose family had been murdered over and over again. But even so, Battler must have remembered something at the end of the last game that made him feel like apologizing. その6年前の妻。これまでの物語のどこかにそれが隠されていたとでも言うのかしら。私はすでにある仮説を立てている。え?聞かせてよ。まだ話せぬ。<笑> もうしばらく私だけ答えを知っているかのような優越を楽しむことにする。続き読まないわよ。それは困る。しばし耐え、もう少し続きを読め。私の仮説もまだ想像の息を出ぬ。確信を持て<笑><笑><笑> たら… その時話すこととしよう。はいはい、我があるし、私だって続きを知りたいわ。Onichan <laughs> and Beatrice, just what kind of connections connection is there between them? Learning that will probably be the ultimate key to the truth of this world. After all, remembering that was what enabled him to reach the truth. Beatrice! Oyakata-sama, yokoso okoshio. Hmm. Is this where he gets like disillusioned and then that's why he's acting so sour and cold? Beatrice-sama ga omachi de gozaimasu. Dozo kochirae. Interesting that it's Kumasawa here, okay. This place was uh, a villa set aside for Beatrice's use. It was a sacred site for her only, built so that she could spend her days without being affected by the outside world. My heart began to race. I'm so glad that she was able to survive, uh, to, to revive, sorry. And that everything's okay. Beto is a personification of the rules. So even though she was destroyed once, it is possible for her to be reborn again. Battler had quickly succeeded in reviving Beto's body. But he had had trouble summoning her soul back. However, during the time he had spent immersed in the creation of the sixth game, she had woken up. And this had happened three days ago. <laughs> and they may have had a character arc in episode 4, but her attitude never changes. <laughs> I hope it doesn't, she's perfect as she is. Metler let himself be led into the dining hall. The dining hall had been set up for his and Beto's use. It existed so that they could enjoy some black tea while discussing the truth, now that he had finally reached it in its entirety. 
Yeah, he's so happy. He's gonna be so crushed. I, I'm expecting. I want to tell her. I want to tell Beto that I found the truth. Beto couldn't hold back his excitement over this miracle he had been granted. That Beato was waiting for him in the dining hall to hear what he had to say. My heart is breaking already. Uh, where are the tissues? <laughs> Beatrice, how are you? Are you okay? ええ、それはもうお元気でいらっしゃいます。親方様がおいでになるのをずっとお待ちでいらっしゃいましたと思う。いやいやいやいや。食堂にいるのか飯でも食ってるのか。Yeah, yeah, 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 yeah. I know, right? Like I feel like it's a black holes in my stomach. <laughs> ああ、いいさ。何でも構わない。驚きますよ。when he swung open the doors to the dining hall, Butler was greeted by a wonderful sight. Though the food laid out on the table wasn't particularly sensational, it was arranged beautifully and a champagne bottle stood there waiting. Then the person clad in that familiar dress with the beautiful golden hair bowed deeply in greeting. The Beatrice. I can't when Battle cries, I'm just I'm done. <laughs> I'm a puddle myself. Uh, Battler rushed up to Beato and hugged her tightly, just to make sure her body wasn't just mist or an illusion. <laughs> when the Nezumi cry. <laughs>、<laughs>、<laughs>、<laughs>、<laughs>、<laughs>、<laughs>、<laughs>、<laughs>、<laughs>、<laughs>、<laughs>、<laughs>、<laughs>、<laughs>、<laughs>、<laughs
You could tell by looking at it that Beato, who wasn't particularly skilled with cooking, had given it her all when making it. However, signs of discomfort and irritation were beginning to appear on Battler's face. <sighs> Sweat was starting to show up on Kumasawa's forehead. She was also feeling uneasy. When he noticed, Battler realized that it wasn't just his imagination. Beto turned her back to Battler and stuck a corkscrew into the champagne bottle. Then she showed it to Battler. When presented with a champagne bottle in a sound like that, anyone would think that the cork had been pulled out. However, it wasn't the cork, it was the bottom of the bottle. The high-quality champagne that Beto had procured splashed out all over the floor in her dress. Then the same sound repeated several more times. Each time, one of the plates of food on the table was knocked into the air. That is the question, isn't it? お前は誰だ。誰だ。I think this is a moment <laughs> where I have um, a very intense appreciation for the author to have first shown us the outcome of this before showing us the how we reached that outcome. <laughs> because <laughs> if we had entered this scene with the same hopes as Battler, this would have been like Tenfolds is sad, you know. Uh, 18 to the 8th times is sad. Okay, yeah. Uh. Yeah, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm noticing this, but what can I say at this point? I'm not really keeping track of all of them. <笑>紛れもなくその方はベアトリーチェ様でございます。そんなはずあるか。これのどこがベアトなんだ。全然違う。偽物だ。いいえ。ベアトリーチェ様でございます。ゲーム版のルールに従い生み出された。紛れもなくベアトリーチェ様ご自身でございます。いや、こんなのはベアトじゃない。ベアトってのはもっとおかしな喋り方をして品のない笑いをして、それからそれから。いいえ。間違いなくベアトリーチェ様ご自身でございます
魂はどうやればよみがえる同じ千年の人生を歩めばかつてと同じベアトリーチェ様にもなるでしょう<笑>千年を待てと<笑>人の性格は生まれながらだけのものではありませんその後の生き方や経験によっていかようにも変わります同じベアトであっても同じでないということがわかるわ同じ人間が2人いたとしても生い立ちで人はいくらでも本来は同じ人間であるにもかかわらずその生い立ちによって別人と言ってもいいほどに変わり得る。Oh, thank you so much! <laughs> That's so kind! Uh, yeah, well, it's been quite a hell of a ride. We're at episode 6 already, just started it tonight, so. Uh, it's, it's been quite something. <laughs> We just got out of an emotional moment as well, so I'm still picking myself up. <laughs> Hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. We use the term person to refer to a person, not their personality. しかし人格を人だと認める人間たちにとってそれはさながら他人のようなものでしょう。I see. I, I, I see, and it still makes me scratch my head a bit. She's awful, but I love her. Yeah, that seems to encompass the general attitude towards Erika that I've seen already in chat. She's the worst. I love her. I would never want to meet her. Exactly. <laughs> All Erika fans love her as much as they hate her. I, I can say that. Very conflicting feelings over there, but hey, it's, it's quite appropriate for a story like with Mineko. <laughs> I can fix her, but I won't. She's perfect. <laughs> exactly. Uh. She got in this. No, oh, Joe, that the Junior and my no kino doc night king and Nagria. Imagoroa, Ega, and Yell, cute on a woman, or that the commission. Strain. I was actually thinking earlier that uh, what's happening now? From now on, we're gonna have this meta layer uh, NJ and Featherine reading the story, and I'm not gonna get any more Amakusa. <laughs> Apparently, that wasn't the case. We get more Amakusa. Amakusa be cool. <laughs> I love their interactions so much. <laughs> I understand. If a personality is what makes a person a person in our eyes, you could say that the second personality is a different person entirely, even if it inhabits the same flesh body. Yeah, I missed her too, yeah, yeah. Not only Amaksa, but also Amaksa openly flirting with NJ. <laughs> uh, he is so cool. He has the riz, okay? He's he's just mm. uh, his lines hit in the perfect amount of playfulness, flirty, but also I feel like the underlying layer there is something that was noted also earlier uh, tonight is that he jokes around to make her feel more relaxed, and whenever he senses tension, he tries to diffuse it with this kind of humor, which is the Thing that I love the most about him. <laughs> she doesn't seem to hate it that much. No, right? <laughs> she just acts like NJ, I guess. 
Oh, really? Red Needle? I, I, I mean, I wouldn't know. <laughs> I, I don't know how other people feel about Amoxa. Mental health support bodyguard. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Some people hate or love him. Okay, maybe... I don't know. I haven't seen a single thing about him so far that I could dislike. So... I don't know what's in the future, though. Like, I, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get to, uh, there. Until then, I, I, I'm floored. I love him. Some people have a problem with Amaksa being older than Enji. Okay, I'm not gonna open that can of worms. Maybe some other time. I don't know if their ages have been established. Uh, what I notice and what I like and what I express my thoughts about is their uh, dynamic and interactions, which, in my perspective, are incredibly healthy for her. So... All good for me. Yeah, I, I don't know. Right. At the very least, I'm a completely different person than I used to be 12 years ago. And if my family had come home 12 years ago, then the NJ that resulted would surely be a completely different person from me. Some people are really obsessed with that kind of stuff. It was mentioned earlier in our playthrough as well, something about George and Shannon in the same direction. Um, yeah. I don't feel like the novel, at least for me, maybe I haven't picked up all the proper details, but I don't feel like it established properly, first of all, exactly what their ages are. Um, unless I go and Google it in a wiki or something. Um, and also just what the timeline was of their relationship and uh, yeah from how i've seen george acting towards her um i'm cool i'm cool so yeah. even the same human can become different people in fact depending on their upbringing and endless possibilities they can become an endless number of different people so just because this is the same battle, that's no guarantee at all that she'll be the battle that Onichan knows so well. Mastia, Beatrice was ten years old. Hetta Majo, Hito wa mikka areba, shinu koto datte, umare kawaru koto datte dekiru. Sore ga ten nen ja, dou ni mo naranai wa ne. Yeah, yeah, right. Um, I. Uh... I wasn't necessarily putting them on the same uh, uh, level because obviously the <laughs> the relationship is different. But I just uh, felt like that was another similar thing that uh, was mentioned uh, by some of you in chat a while ago. I don't remember exactly who was it you bear who told me that, or I don't know. Someone said that in the beginning. Um, and while their dynamic is kind of playful, a little bit flirty, but not really going there, even if it were to or not, you know, it's up to them, whatever, I don't necessarily ship them. I just think they're a really good pair of characters that are interacting together and the conversations and interactions that are resulting are very enjoyable and you can get some something of substance from them I, I like I st there's a lot of lines that still ring in my head from the conversation on the boat about being satisfied um, so I, I just think this is a, just just a great duo of characters you know <laughs> whatever they want to be if it's uh, romantic or not uh, there is a little bit of a, of a vibe I guess but uh, like I said uh, that's just a surface layer I think underneath he is just um, acting protective of her, which in a way is his job too. <laughs> because Enja needs mom. <laughs> okay, I see, I see. Enja. There is, I mean, I, there is some, like I'm acknowledging it as well. <laughs> Dollar store battle support. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, that's really cool. I think Angel loves hamburger. <laughs> Red needle. Uh, I will never, I will never out outlive those those jokes. Like, mm. Yeah. Okay. 
あなたはなかなかできる読者のようですね波の読者相手だったら同一の人間であってもその生い立ちと時間によって別人になりうることを説明するために数百ページを割かねばならぬというのにあまり読者をなめないで私たちはただ読んでるだけじゃない読んで考えてるの100人に読ませれば90人くらいは読めるしかし意味がわかるのは50人そしてそこからさらに考えられるのは20人もいないよく噛んで飲み込みなさいと Are we being called out again? Is that what this is? いやいやいやしかしあなたはどうやらその貴重な20人の中の一人らしいだからここへ招いたのです人の声を It was hard to actually like this Hachijo Toya person <laughs> However Uh, though this forgery she had written was still in its first stages, it definitely felt as though it had something very similar to the tale in those message bottles. This was controversial at release. Um, you mean at the release of this episode? Speaking metaphorically, one might call it a scent. An indescribable stern atmosphere, like a stuffy library. The bad teacher who wrote the message bottles and Hachijo Toya are different people. And yet, this has the same scent as that tale. I see. This is why some of those curious witch hunters are so intensely devoted to her. Their keen sense of smell was able to sniff out that familiar scent. So, please, read the text of 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 the text. 言葉を交わし合うこともありがとうフェデリン私は一度に呼んだ私のクラスメイトの子供の子供の子供の子供の子供の子供の子供の子供の子供の子供の子供の子供の子供の子供の子供の子供の子供の子供の子供の子供の子供の子供の子供の子供の子供の子供の子供の子供の子供の子供の子供の子供の子供の子供の子供の子供の子供の子供の I, I, I get it. I, I, I cannot begin to scratch the surface of all of the effort that he must have put into concocting、um, all of these, but there's just so much of it. <laughs> And、um, it's such a high time and、um, mental energy investment just to read it once. Having to go back and retrace your steps and figure stuff out because when, when things are unknown and you experience them the first time, you might be tempted to piece them together in a certain way, particularly because he has this penchant and this tendency to just keep going back and forth, particularly in timelines. And also, there's something developing between characters in the scene and some other characters in another scene, and、um, then we see a little bit of this and then a little bit of that, a little bit of this, a little bit of that.、Uh, which Wouldn't be that bad, but then on top of that, you have all of the meta layers and things. He built a very complex, huge mental palace of dynamics and narrative lines and things. And so, of course, not everybody is going to immediately piece it together, right? And I, I don't know if that's necessarily, I, I don't see that necessarily as a negative thing towards the, the readers, nor do I see it as a negative thing toward, towards the author.、Um, he made things the way he wanted to make them, but there's a, a certain. <sighs> how much control do you have over how your readers read your work or perceive it? Because you might have intended a certain way, but you cannot reach out through the screen and force them to、uh, understand your intention behind it. <laughs> right? That's not going to happen. Some will, some will not.、Um, but is it really that wrong to you know, go at it or perceive it a little bit differently? We're all different people, our minds don't function the same, so I don't know. In Japan, there was some negative reception because some people thought Rikishi was insulting them and scenes like this and others. I mean, I can see there's a, a, 
sort of call out, but I see it as a humoristic one. Like, I'm laughing. <laughs> I don't feel insulted. And I am one of those who will not get it. <laughs> Whatever. I think it would be more easy to go back if not all the episodes are already released. Um, I mean, it was definitely... The way I'm experiencing the novel now is completely different from how it must have been experienced by people at, that were um, consuming it at release, uh, episode by episode, and also with the old um, art and everything, no voice acting and stuff like that, so... It's it's day and night probably in terms of the the experience, so I cannot I cannot say much in that direction. I just I think it's fair to make a statement that no matter how much you design things to be perceived or seen or experienced in a certain way, uh, people who will vibe with you on that level of um, intellect and or like intellectual pursuits, they will likely go about it your way. But you cannot control everyone, and we are so different, and it's a beautiful thing that uh, we have people in the world who think differently, or go about things differently than others, because that's how we complete each other, right? So some will do it the, the way the author also intended, and some will do it differently, but at the end of the day, if they're all having fun, what's the problem? It's... anyway. <laughs> To write the chick battle realistically, you <laughs> should spend 10 years on a chicken bar. Uh. I think it's quite the opposite, even him bending here a bit means he has a certain amount of trust in his readers and trust his love. You mean trust uh, in his readers not to take it the wrong way? Yeah, I, I get that. Umineko, thousands of hours to read it, other thousands uh, to understand it, other thousands in the fight. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh. Yes, Red Needle, but what I'm trying to say is can you control it? Not really. Um, and it's also, I mean, I don't know. I don't know, that sounds quite extreme, people not even caring what you're trying to say. Is it really the case that there were people like that? I mean, I wouldn't put it past humanity, because we're, yeah, we can have uh, weird specimens among us, and they're all people as well. Um, but... Why would someone sit down to read something, something as big as Umineko, and not care what it is about, or what the author intended? Right, I feel like that's maybe a bit of an extreme statement and doesn't really reflect um, reality quite um, accurately. Maybe there's like a, f a few fringe edge weird cases, I suppose. It's a direct mirror from the previous episode, where they talked about the trusting relationship between mystery author and reader, both wanting the other to accept them. Hmm. Yeah, I guess so. Let's try to finish this. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I love this conversation. So it's really cool. I also, this, you know, this is one... My only avenue, actually, as I'm reading the novel, to get a bit of the pulse of how people perceive things. Just by living vicariously through you. Because <laughs> I'm, like, sealed from everything else. Yeah. There's some people that are like that. You're trying to understand uh, with open arms. Right. That is true, though, because it's such a one-sided direction, you know. You want to write something for people and you want to evoke maybe certain thoughts or emotions, but uh, you're not for sure if you manage that, so you want to know what they think of it. So many clocks in this place, though. Like, what's, what's up with that? I see one, two, three, four, five. 
minimum. And is this like a grandfather clock over here? <laughs> yeah. But the second hand and the pendulum on the uh, ornate clock behind Hachijo had been moving the whole time. However, absolutely no time had passed for a while now. Only about three minutes had gone by since the time she had entered the room. Really? It feels like it's been two hours. <laughs> <笑>気にすることもないでしょ。あなたが読み終わるまで全ての時間はあなたを追い立てない。オールライト。イフオンライフワズダットゥダットウェイトゥ。あ、マクサワンツトノー。マクサバジェットミーとトゥトゥンド
yeah, so the schedule will continue as, as per usual. If there's ever an interruption or I can stream because I'm away or something, I will always announce it in advance. Um, and uh, just a, a heads up, because I was getting questions as to when the streams would start, I try my best to maintain the little widget underneath the stream and also the Twitch schedule feature um, to make it as um, close to reality as possible. The widget is a little bit weird because I have to take out and put back the streams whenever I do or don't stream. Um, but the schedule also has this vacation mode kind of thing, the one from Twitch. So if I'm ever off for an extended period of time, you can see there I will mark the dates and everything. So if you ever have questions, you can check it there. We've gotten off to a good start, plenty of Fumineko feels. Oh yeah, <laughs> we've had all of them feels. It's the whole palette of, of feels tonight. We haven't even started the game board yet. This will be a wrong run. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> I love it because like, okay, now let's get started with the game. And I'm like, okay, fine, great. We've been here for, I don't know, over an hour and a half. Uh, perfect. Now we're starting. And then we switch to NJ and Feathering commenting because, of course, and yeah, we never outgrew that in the end. So the, the game itself hasn't started. Uh, yeah. And yet we still we've already experienced the feels and the pain. Yeah. Um <laughs> yeah. Uh Uneko is the only story where you pass five hours and you still in the week. <laughs> only five hours? That's a rookie number. <laughs> uh yeah, how many has it been thus far? Jeez, fifty-eight. Multiply that by 2.5 at least. That's the hours so far. Yeah. Okie dokes. Okie dokes. Um, appreciate the, the uh, generousness of the sub gifts and of the raid as well. That was, that was super nice. <laughs> Some cool surprises as a, a start in 2024. Um, as I said, things will continue as per usual, so let's get on this roller coaster and train feel, and um, I guess I will see you of, with another round of When the Uminezus Cry <laughs> uh, next time. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Until then, take care, have a great relaxing weekend, and. Um, yeah, just uh, be awesome and cool and chill as you always are. Love you. Bye-bye. Good night.